In this video, we're going to look at how we can use SView, which is built into SFrame, to view our SFrame model behavior after we run an analysis. So as I mentioned already, SFrame is, actually includes SView by default, but you can also download it free of charge from our website and use it without an SFrame installation. And the intention with SView is to view your model in richer detail, but also to be able to see your results in more detail as well. This can be anything from your deflected shapes uh, for linear or dynamic, or, or sorry, for static or dynamic analysis or nonlinear analysis. We can also view mode shapes and a lot more. And with this as view, you can also produce animations, screenshots, and even videos that you can share with others who might not have SRAM. So it's a great way for you to share information from your analysis results with the outside world. And to explain this feature in more detail, I'm actually going to use a different model than we have in the past. Uh, this model is not really something that we've discussed how to create, and we won't get into that within this video series. However, I'll explain it in a little bit more detail. We have a mesh slab. This slab is made up of shell elements that represent a concrete slab with some holes and, and cutouts as well. And we have some concrete columns underneath it. Now I've already ran the analysis, so I've got all my results here. And I could look at different results within SFRAME as I'm used to doing. However, if I want to look at things in more detail, I would go to Run and then SView. And SView will launch with my model. Now SView has a different look and feel than SFRAME. We have these different windows that we can manipulate as much as we like. We can add or remove them. We can dock them onto different monitors or different locations within our screen. And you may notice here within this settings menu, we have uh, different low case and combinations available for us to look at. So I can look at any one of these. Let's click, click on our low combination, dead and live plus wall loads. And I have different displays that I can use as well. So I can look at the element, contour, object display. My element display is basically the display that most represents what I would be seeing in SFRAM and showing me the actual finite elements. And I can press this green button here at the bottom, this play button, to render my deflections for this particular load case. Now, obviously, this has been exaggerated, but it's going to go through and basically show me gradually increasing deflection. And I have this little timeline on the bottom that allows me to click and drag my mouse and look at the deflection at any one single point. I can look at the object view, and now I can actually see the detailed rendering of these elements. I have my steel columns and my concrete slab modeled with the correct thickness. And I can see the deflection of that as well. Now I can adjust things like my deflection scale. So right now I'm increasing the magnification of my deflection by 100 times. However, I can change this if I wanted to. And let's say I want to go with something a little bit more realistic. It, with the 1, it might not show up with any deflection whatsoever. So I want to find something that works for me and is still going to allow me to see the deflected shapes. If I'm happy with what I see, I can always take a screenshot and maybe I want to share this with a colleague or somebody else that uh, doesn't have access to my SRAM license. So I can take a screenshot and it will actually save a screenshot. If I look at the image export option here. It will save a screenshot with the desired format into this file path that's shown here. So I can save as many screenshots as I like and use them later on, send them in emails or use them in reports. We can also generate animation. So we have this camera animation tab. And here I can generate different types of camera animations. I can click on the add button and choose what type of animation I'd like. Would I like a stationary animation, an orbit, or perhaps a path animation? I have these different options available to me. So I'm going to choose an orbit option where the camera is going to orbit around my model. And here I can adjust some of the parameters. So I'm just going to increase the size of this camera animation window so I can see all the details. So I've chosen a radius, and I can always change that if I want. Maybe I want to use a 20 meter radius. And maybe I only want it to go 180 degrees around my model. And I can choose where I'm looking at 
and the position of my camera currently. And once I'm ready to animate, I can just press this green button again to get an understanding for what that looks like. And it might be rotating a little bit fast for my liking, so I can go back to the Settings tab, and I can change this Duration option, which allows me to control how long these types of animations occur for. So let's just say this is going to be 10 seconds. So now it's slowly rotating, and you can see the animation is slowly uh, showing the deflected shapes. I also have this bounding box around my model that I can turn on or off. To display this or turn it off, I just go to the visualization field here at the bottom of the settings menu, and I can say show and don't show me the bounce. And now that will get rid of that. And if I wanted to, I could produce a recording. So we have this video recording option, which actually does require a separate license from the default. But we can generate different types of video recordings. Or we can just simply save this as an SVU file, go export.svu. And then we can make this available to whoever wants to view it in their own SVU. So think of SVU as a way to view a read-only S-Frame result file. One thing that we also haven't talked about is that we have this contour option to view results. So if I wanted to view the contour results, I can display what type of coordinate system I want to review them on, the type of result I'm interested, force or stress, so I'm just going to choose force, and then the actual result that I'm interested in. So I have moments, shears, torsions, membrane forces, so I can go with a shear force list this time. And I just press the generate button. And S view is going to generate for me a contour diagram. And it's going to show me where the shear forces are highest within my model, within this slab. And this is one of the advantages to using shell elements to model these slabs. And this is outside of the scope of what we talked about with modeling so far, but we do have other videos related to it.